All right, we're starting for real this time. Welcome. Um, thank you for coming to the talk. I know it's the last, on the last day of the conference. We're all from SIG Release, and we'll be sharing stuff about the release team and release engineering. So my name is Grace. I led the uh, 1.28 Kubernetes release that came out in August, and I've been on the release team for over two years now. Hey, I'm John Anderson. I'm an SRE at a company called Ditto, and I'm the newest member of the release team. I've been on the last two releases, 128 and now 129. And my name is Adolfo Garcia. I'm a, an open source engineer with Chainyard, and I am one of the technical leads with uh, Kubernetes SIG release. And as they said, like we're so honored to have you here as in the very, very last minute of the conference. Uh, so I guess. Thank you to all of you and to the thousands looking at us on YouTube, so cool. So let's begin with what is SIG release. So as some of you may know, Kubernetes has organized itself in several special interest groups. Uh, you have special interest groups for all sorts of things are, uh, that compose the project. We have one for storage, which we have one for networking, and we happen to be the group that takes care of releasing Kubernetes every month. Um, uh, we have a clear uh, and defined mission, uh, which is establish a consumable, introspectable, and secure supply chain for Kubernetes. Um, and, but I, I guess the way you can think about this is that we are the SIG that groups together all of the contributors that are working on the release tooling and the processes that make uh, bring you Kubernetes every every month. Um, C releases C release has two main sub projects. One is the release engineering uh, sub project, which um, I'm one of the uh, technical leads together with Carlos here, and I'm going to be talking about that. And the other one is the release team, uh, which my colleagues here are going to, are going to talk about. Um, this is our main entry point into the C. Uh, we're going to have links uh, for it at the end. So. You could say that uh, SIG release is sort of two parts. One part, uh, a wonderful group of uh, volunteers that rotate constantly with every release, and the, the machinery that powers all of the release processes. And release engineering is the part that, get, that takes care of that. Um, uh, the release engineering team takes care of the tooling that powers the Kubernetes releases. Uh, we also uh, manage the release managers team, uh, which are, are the group of uh, contributors that uh, take care of uh, executing the tools to release Kubernetes to cut the releases uh, every time we have a new patch release or when the release cycle is up. Um, we also uh, uh, also build uh, all of the uh, supply chain security enhancements for Kubernetes. Uh, and. Um, we also handle some infrastructure that hosts the um, hosts the release artifacts. Um, uh, so specifically for this update, the the big thing that we wanted to talk to you about is that we now are using the open build service from SUSE uh, to build and publish our system packages. So the, our system packages, uh, we so every every Kubernetes release. Uh, comes together with a number of artifacts, container images, binaries, uh, some tarballs, the source code, uh, but we also package for you RPMs and devs. Um, and if you have been following the Kubernetes news recently, uh, there has been a huge effort from all sorts of all corners of the community to move from the infrastructure that Google was kindly providing us for, uh, to the project for many, many years, and we're now moving everything to community-owned and controlled infrastructure, which um, not only is better for us because we have more control, but also lets other companies chip in uh, to uh, help with the costs of uh, running and serving Kubernetes. So I'm going to give you like a super brief overview of the release process so that you understand a little bit how the, what the improvements uh, involve. So um, in in three. In three um, vignettes, the release process works like that. The first, the first stage, the first phase is the stage, uh, the stage phase. And during that, we build everything. Uh, we build the container images, the binaries, 
uh, package the sources, the tarballs, and, and everything that's going to go out with the release, except for the OS packages. The next, uh, the next phase that the release managers execute is the release phase, where uh, we push the images to the registries, all of the binaries to the bucket where they're finally served. Uh, we push all of the Git objects to GitHub, and again, not the OS packages. And then when everything is done, we publish out uh, the release to those raving fans that consume Kubernetes every month. Uh, but this is not exactly the way it works. Um, there's a small, um, there used to be a small detour in the middle. Uh, so the way it w used to work is that we staged everything, run the release process, and before letting the world know that Kubernetes was available, we used to run, uh, call our friends at Google to help us with uh, packaging the, uh, the OS packages. And um, so when, the, when everything was ready to be shipped out, um, we called Google, and just to make it uh, less informal, less impersonal, I'm going to slap some random guy's face on this. <laughs> uh, so we called them and uh, say, like, OK, uh, we need help. And they would uh, literally build the OS packages on their laptop. Uh, no one was looking. And then push those, um, those, um, those packages back to the uh, repository, which, was owned, which is still owned by Google, but we don't, are not publishing there anymore. And then once those uh, RPM and devs were uh, in the repository, then we could announce to the world that they were ready. So we changed things a little bit. And the way that we do it now is that we have a, um, uh, during the staging process in the release, in, 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 the release cycle, in the release process, what we will do is we kick off the builds of the, of, the, of the packages. So all of the devs and RPMs get built using SUSE's open, open build service. Then when we release, we use their API to, pu to publish uh, the newly built packages to the community repositories. And then finally, we announce uh, the releases out. Um, so uh, there's a bunch of benefits uh, of doing this, because now we don't have to abuse Ben and others uh, in the middle of the night to help us got the, to package the, the uh, system packages. Now we have a fully automated process that runs uh, when, uh, as part of our, of our pipelines. Uh, the signing key, uh, we used to use a shared key with Google. Now it's a, a key that's controlled by the community. Uh, and in general, it brings a better life quality for the release manager so that uh, we can do things more efficiently. It comes with some, some challenges, like for example, we now had to rotate the key because you, we were using the Google key. Now we have a, a community key. And it also like, was a challenge communicating the changes because we had to do it uh, in a really uh, you know, fast uh, pace, uh, do, the, the, do the changes really fast. So if you happen to be around the Balkans and you find my friend, Marco Mudrinic, uh, you really needed to thank him. Um, he single-handedly um, took over the job of making sure that this project uh, happened. So the community is now, uh, should be really, really thankful to him. Uh, also, big thanks to Suse, who has been uh, really helping us and kind uh, answering our questions. And of course, uh, to the Google admin teams that over the years helped us uh, package those, uh, those system packages. And we have a bunch of other um, highlights from the back six months, like uh, to make sure that to help us build the, the, the tooling to power this, um, this project. Uh, Sig release actually uh, the, it, I applied, I think, for the first time, the, for the first time to, uh, uh, to, the, to, to have an intern from the LFX program. Um, and we've been working to stabilize the release tooling. Uh, yeah, so Kube PKG and Rapture, which were the, tool, the tools that used to build the system packages before, are now gone. Um, we now serve the checks and files uh, from the S1 location from Kubernetes. Uh, so we are helping other projects move uh, to use the uh, OBS builds. Um, uh, and, and this has the benefit of also helping uh, uh, other projects under the Kubernetes umbrella use that same automation. Have some re uh, updates to our uh, SBOM uh, generator. And of course, there's the heavy lifting that the team does every month. Uh, like 
make sure we are bumping uh, the Go dependency updates. Uh, we are updating the, uh, we updated the uh, base images that we used to Debian Bookworm. Um, and of course, the hard work that the release managers put into um, to cut the releases every month. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it to, uh, to Grace to talk about the release team. Yeah, so as mentioned, um, the release team uh, works more with the community. We work with them uh, to pull in caps and enhancement to, to gather them for deadlines. Uh, we also work on a bunch of different things like uh, creating documentation and communication with the rest of the community. So 1.28 um, was released in August, and two things that stood out for me, although we shipped about 47 features, um, and some deprecation mostly related to uh, removing Seth out of tree. Um, so two things that stood out to me. The first one is we are allowing three instead of two version SKU between the control plane and the node now. Um, so hopefully that will make it easier for folks to upgrade. Um, and then the other features that I think a lot of uh, folks in the community care about is API awareness for Sidecar containers. Um, that went into alpha in 1.28. Um, I believe they opted in uh, to beta for 1.29, and that will include uh, more cool things like um, ordering uh, container termination. So I linked the uh, release block there if you want to check out more. Yeah, so 1.29 is now in progress, and it will come out on December 5th. Um, the mid-cycle blog is scheduled for post KubeCon, but the PR is up if you're curious and want to poke around. Cool, let's uh, get a little bit meta and talk about um, what we're thinking about inside the team. So before 1.26, we use uh, this giant monster of an Excel sheet to keep track of all of our enhancement. And it got close to about 100 enhancement at some point, and you know, 30 people on the um, release team plus SIG leads were looking into that all the time, and it was like a scary thing. And so 1.26, we migrated over to the GitHub project board, and that has worked really well for us. So great in, uh, so great in fact that um, now uh, we are eliminating the bug triage team, not elimination, but we're merging the team. Um, so the task that the bug triage folks were doing uh, can easily be handled now uh, with the board. So starting next release, we are merging those two together into a team called the Release Signal Team, um, and they will handle the uh, stability of the test and the bugs in the release. Um, we're also uh, working on a process uh, regarding removing inactive release team member. Um, so this is something that we kind of expect to happen every release team. It's a time-sensitive role to be on the release team, and it requires you to be responsive. Um, and sometimes folks resign, and sometimes they don't, and they just kind of drop off the radar, and that creates uh, more work for other folks. Um, so. This is just putting things on paper um, about the knowledge we're sharing and how to handle those situations uh, for future leads. And uh, we rely heavily on the folks over at SigDocs to help us with things like documentation or release block, feature blocks. Um, and so we're also working on a new checklist um, such that the folks on the release docs team can better work with SIG, uh, SIG docs uh, on the future for weekly status. Um, one thing that the release team docs folks were struggling with as well is uh, syncing the docs branch uh, from the SIG docs repo into the things that is relevant for that release. And they have to do that once every one or two weeks. Um, and it's just kind of a lot of work for them. And it's like one of those things that could be automated and has been automated for the general release. Um, so that's one of the goals that they're working towards um, to remove that workload for the team. Now, John is going to talk about how you can join us. Yeah, and so if all of that sounded super exciting, or if you just want to hang out with Puerco and Grace, uh, joining the release team is the quickest and easiest way to do that. Uh, it is, I joined in 128, and so the experience there is I had been using Kubernetes since 113, but didn't know how the sausage was made. And so I was really kind of worried about joining that uh, side of it because one of my coworkers had been adding 
uh, time zone support to jobs in Kubernetes, and it took them almost three years to get it through. So it's like, I don't know if I have three years to commit to uh, contributing to K Kubernetes right now. And so I found the release team, and it was a phenomenal experience. Uh, it's a distributed team, fully remote, asynchronous, uh, and so they have to document everything. It's a volunteer-driven organization, so it's rotating in and out, and so the onboarding has to be top-notch, because otherwise, the next cycle isn't gonna be as stable as the previous one. And so I've enjoyed it, and I think everyone should be joining uh, the release team, figuring out how the sausage is made, uh, joining this amazing community and collaborating with everybody. And it really gets you in the door to collaborate with the other SIGs and the other projects, because since we have CI Signal, which is collaborating with every SIG, depending on how stable the release cycle is, or like docs and enhancements, whatever's changing, you're gonna be in there talking with those uh, contributors and you're gonna slowly get in there and then you can start working your way towards more contributions. Uh, and the time commitment uh, is not a lot, uh, but it really depends on the team. Because uh, if you take something like CI Signal, where you're doing a lot of test quality, uh, that's consistent throughout the whole release cycle. So you can kind of decide what team you want to be on based on what you're capable of doing. Uh, if you join the comms team, for example, that's going to be really heavy at the end. That's where all of that uh, communication is going. And what we're looking for is just people that are passionate, uh, people that are contributing to open source. And so when we're reviewing these applications, uh, we do have a lot. Uh, in Kubernetes 128, we had 126 applicants, and now we had 165 in the most recent one. Uh, and so it's ramping up every time. And so it is getting more competitive. It's getting a little more difficult to be on the release team because we can only welcome so many new people each time. Um, but we do encourage everyone to apply more than once. Uh, you have a much better chance to get in your second or third time while you're applying. And if you are actually showing more experience over time. So maybe you don't get into the release team the first time. Join some of the other SIGs. Uh, all of our meetings are recorded. You can come, you can join, you can communicate with us. And that helps you during the application process because we're looking for people that will stick around. Like Grace was saying, if you join and then disappear, that leaves the people that are there to pick up that. And we're releasing every six months on a cycle. We don't like to be delayed. And so we want to select people who are gonna be there for the long time. And so, yeah, as you can see, like it, it, it was a 16% success rate to all of our applicants uh, in the previous release. Uh, and that's only gonna get lower as we have more applicants. Uh, and so yeah, I'd say like the best thing is to join those other SIGs. Uh, you can help out Puerco on release engineering. OpenSUSE Build Service is a joy to work with, so it's a great place to, to start if you need to. Yeah, and then if you wanna join us, here's some links about how we're going. Do you wanna talk about some of the links you have in there about SBOMs? Oh yeah, well, this, these are uh, some of the links to the, some of the tooling that we produce that can help you with your releases, uh, even if you're not in Kubernetes, those tools can help you generate test bombs, generate uh, uh, SASA provenance at the stations. We also have some release actions if you want to automate your, your processes. And um, going back to the release team, um, I think that I would like to spend just two minutes uh, talking about how proud, uh, how proud I am of the success stories that we keep hearing and you can have the privilege of uh, being a part of. Um, Grace here is a great example. Uh, she joined, uh, she did like a really good job on the release team, eventually got to uh, run um, the release cycle for one of the biggest software projects in the world. Uh, and you can do that too, you can join us. Uh, Marco, who I showed, uh, is another example. I am another example. I had the, the privilege of having been mentored by Tim here, Sasha here, Carlos. Um, and it's been, it's a great example. So if you want to start your Kubernetes journey, uh, come with us and don't be discouraged if you don't get selected in the first try of the release team. I got rejected, I think, one, once for the, uh, for the release team, so um, it's natural. But we have lots of work to do and uh, the release team is um, easier because it sort of guides you through the Kubernetes journey. But we also, we also have things for you to do. Uh, so if you're looking for work, we have some for you. Um, and yeah, and hopefully you can uh, get uh, like a good experience uh, joining the project and helping us release Kubernetes every month.
So, thank you. Yeah. Right, so, mo uh, lots of familiar faces, so, uh, but if, you, if there are any questions, please, we're open to them. Um, it's a secret. My, one of my coworkers. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here at the last moment of the conference. <laughs>